الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا اللهم ربي يسر ولا تعسر وتم بالخير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم صدق الله صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين اما بعد <coughs> الحمد لله الحمد لله all praises and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us to be gathered here today to perform the Salatul Jum'ah and to listen to the khutbah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his peace and blessings upon the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. We pray and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his mercy, his guidance, his forgiveness, and his acceptance upon each and every one of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fast, our Ramadan, our Quran, our ibadah, our charity, and all our a'mal and good deeds, especially in this holy and blessed month of Ramadan. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his rahmah, his mercy upon me by giving me the permission and the ability to fulfill this responsibility in delivering the khutbah. I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance. I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's assistance. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower unto me the quality of tawakkal ala Allah, the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqwa, the piety, the iman, the faith, the hikmah, the wisdom, the ilm, the knowledge, and once more the ability to fulfill this responsibility in delivering the khutbah or the sermon. I put my tawakkal I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most sufficient. My brothers and sisters, <clears throat> Alhamdulillah, today happens to be the 15th day of Ramadan. MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah. Tonight will be <clears throat> the 16th night of Ramadan. Which means that Wednesday coming, which is the 13th of May, Wednesday night will be the 21st night of Ramadan. Be the what? The 21st night of Ramadan. 
You know, I always wanted to share a little sunnah with you all, but I think I'll have to do it. You know, COVID-19 and coronavirus is really a blessing. There are so many lessons. As I said last week, bi'idhnillah, I started giving the khutbah on time. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Barakat of COVID-19 and ending on time, subhanAllah. But there's something I always wanted to share with our people in Juma, And I wish that this could be embedded in our hearts. Do you know it is sunnah, while all of you have on mask, do you know it is sunnah to look at the khatib when the khutbah is going on? Not look at your toes and your knees and the ground and the mat. That's some kind of kuli mentality. The heart village mentality. I don't know where that mentality came from. I don't know who invented that practice. The sunnah. And why I need to say that today? Because you have on mask. I can't see your lips. I can't see your nose. I can't see your face. I don't even know what's the reaction. <laughs> so it came to my mind of the sunnah. You see, brother, I mean, Sheikh, didn't this teach you guys that in Jamaat? The guys, do you know it is a sunnah? A lot of people sit and give khutbah. It is sunnah to stand and give khutbah. So when you see people who sit and give khutbah, it's probably they got a leg problem or they got a health problem. So Allah make it easy for them. But remember this. As we're here, it's Juma. COVID-19 barakat brings those a hadith memories to mind. It is sunnah to stand. You go places and people tell you, sit, don't follow these stupid people. It is sunnah to stand and give a sermon, especially a Juma sermon. I see people sit and give a bayan. Where they invented that from, that's a dihat Indian mentality. You guys got that? It's not sunnah. Go read the sunnah. It is sunnah to stand and give a message, unless you're sick. And it is sunnah that the people who are listening must look at the khatib. So much so in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and I'm cutting the khutbah of what we want. We're talking about and continue, inshallah. There were no parda between the men and the ladies, and the ladies used to look on, so they will concentrate. Oh yes, yes. Go check it out in hadith. I always say, Bismillah, Bismillah. Don't believe what I say. Go verify. It is sunnah to look at the khatib. That's a sunnah. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam on Eid day, on some occasions he would go over on the lady's side, even though they're there and there were no walls. But he will go in front of them and give them another message. To make sure that they looked and they understand and they absorb. That's why here in Darul Uloom, and many are massaging now, but we have been doing this many decades ago. Many what? Decades ago. That we always had a television monitor on the ladies' side so they could see the khatib. Not a matter they could see me. It's not me. It's whoever is given the bayad. It is sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to have eye contact with the people you're talking to. It is considered disrespect for the person who is giving the khutbah, the person, the person, the khatib, not to have eye contact with the audience. That's why it was sunnah that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will move left or right and watch his people, watch his people, watch his people. There are some khatib, they move left to right, but they don't look at the people. See? Which is not right. They practice the sunnah. Left to right. But you're supposed to try to get eye contact with your audience. That's the sunnah. And similarly, the audience is supposed to have eye contact with the person who is given the bayan, the reminder, the khutbah, etc. So I want this Be'ithnallah to be a reminder for all our viewers out there on al Hikmah TV, YouTube, Facebook, and our Muslims. Because a lot of masajids I, I go to in, the, in America, and I see a lot of people during khutbah, they bend their heads. I don't know, what are you ashamed for? Kiss bad, say sharam hai bai. What are you ashamed of? Coming for Juma? What are you bending your head for? That's not modesty. 
It's not modesty, it's stupidity. This is a dihat mentality, a village mentality that has been practiced on that everybody bend their head. And then shaitan taps you on your head and you fall asleep. It says, soja bacha, soja beta, and shaitan rubs your head and next thing you fall asleep. So you've got to set up yourself to look at the khutbah, the person giving the khutbah, the khatib. But, you know, I was, yes, I wanted to say this, but it never came to my mind. Allahu Akbar, COVID-19 barakat, you see? Because I can't concentrate on the faces of the people because of the mask, but you need to have the mask on. Right? But you could look on and do this all the time wherever you go. Quran and hadith. Quran and hadith. Quran and hadith. We have been reminded of. As much as possible, you can look at where it's coming from. You focus. You get more blessings. That's the sunnah. And you don't have to believe that. Go home, check Bukhari, check the hadith. And saying that, my brothers and sisters, saying that, that brings me to another point. Another point, before I continue on what we were saying. I know this is the month of Ramadan. And this is a time of COVID-19, the coronavirus, COVID-19. And there are a lot of fatwas. There are a lot of muslas. There are a lot of opinions out there. And I mentioned this briefly a couple khutbas ago. Please be careful in what we understand and what we misunderstand. There's something called fiqh jurisprudence. And I'm not here to have a jurisprudence class. We got a fiqh, fiqh jurisprudence class on Sundays at uh, 12.30 to 1.30 for our students. Bismillah. Mashallah. But try to understand that there are a lot of fiqh laws, jurisprudence laws, which are deductions from Quran and Sunnah. You guys follow? And then you get what is called fiqh. So sometimes when something is not direct in the Quran and not direct in the hadith, Sunnah, and there is an issue, so we use the analysis, deduction of Quran, Sunnah, the fuqaha. That's why people spent years and years studying Islam. What? Years. Studying Quran and Sunnah. To analyze fiqh, that when there is an issue and there is nothing direct in the Quran and Sunnah, direct, direct, everything is mentioned in Quran and Sunnah, direct, indirect reference. So now those of us who have studied and researched for years, you go and you find the answers, the analysis and deductions. That's what you call fiqh jurisprudence. Not just one idiot reads a hadith and says, hadith says so and so, so this is not permissible. No. Hadith may say many things, but you don't go by just that to make a decision. You look at Quran, you look at hadith, you look at sunnah, and then you analyze. You follow? That's Islamic jurisprudence. And during these days of COVID-19, we have a lot of people passing a lot of these things online. I read this, I heard this, I say this. See what I'm saying? A lot of things passed around. Shut, why shut down the masjid? Don't go to the masjid. Shut down this. Don't pray tarawih. Don't read the salah in masjid. Don't do six feet. Come on. A lot of these things people read, they hear, and there are differences of opinion. And I respect everybody's opinion. But you know, honestly, we did not really spend seven years and 45 years of dawah Researching Islam and studying fiqh, jurisprudence. That you have a COVID-19 and nobody knows what to do. We have to listen to only what Trump says and Dr. Fossi. You understand? Yes, we listen to them as scientists and politicians and the leaders of the country. But when they say something, we got to go in the Quran. If President Trump tells you drink alcohol, you're going to drink alcohol? If Dr. Fossi tells you eat pork, you're going to eat pork? No. 
As Muslims, we now take the country, the president, the scientists, the doctors, and we go in the Quran and Sunnah and see what is practical for us. You understand? And if it's not practical for us in the country, then we migrate. Because migration is Sunnah. Do you follow? But you don't change the Quran and Sunnah to please ourselves. That's how the seven people of the cave, the cave, Surah Kaf, they migrated because the leaders of that time wanted to kill those who obeyed Allah. Follow? This is the whole long topic. I don't want to get off track. But I'm getting to fiqh. See what I'm saying? Jurisprudence. When the Prophet wasallam could not handle the situation anymore in Makkah, what did he do? He migrated to Medina. When Musa wasallam could not handle the situation with, with, with um, Pharaoh in Egypt, Allah made him migrate from Egypt. When there was the famine in the Holy Land, in Canaan, and Jews, Yusuf wasallam and his family had to go through this famine, Allah hadn't made a reason. The whole nine yards of Yusuf going into the well, the brothers throwing him in the well, going to jail, becoming the next in authority after the king or the pharaoh and brought those Israelites to Egypt. They migrated you follow what I'm saying here? This is Quran. Migrated Jacob and his family, peace be upon them, to Egypt. Migrated Moses and the people, peace be upon him, from Egypt. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam migrated from Makkah when they wanted to kill him. So if you're in a situation in a country, then you're supposed to migrate. But we are not in a problem in America that we have to migrate. Actually, Muslims have more problems in Muslim countries, and they got to migrate to America. So much get away. Because America has more flexibility to practice in Islam. As we hear in Florida, where the governor has allowed us to open the masjid. Religious services are considered essential. So we can practice religious services with the mask. And six feet distance. That's why everybody here, these brothers are all more than ten feet from me. So I am away because of the cameras and the whole nine yards because you won't understand what's going on there. But everybody else is mask. But the point I'm getting at, if the scientists and the doctors tell you something, we got to go into Quran and Sunnah and then obey and follow if it's within Islam. Otherwise we migrate. And alhamdulillah, America being a country with a lot of Christian rulers, and because it's a country that started and founded in the name of God, there are a lot of laws that considers God first. What? There are a lot of laws in the Constitution and of America that gives God first place. First place. That's why religion has that right that politicians cannot dictate to religious leaders. They can recommend for the benefit of religion, but not pass laws to shut down religion. That was the basis America was started. All right, go study that history. I don't have time for that too. But what am I getting at? Fick. I went through that whole nine yards to get to a fick point. So there are studies that go along Research of Quran and Sunnah in times of this, like coronavirus. Never has it happened in history where so many, where all the countries had to be 99.9% on shutdown. So there are laws now that scholars who have studied jurisprudence, jurisprudence, have decided, okay, the permission of six feet apart praying with their mask. Some, I don't like to use the word whatever. Scholars studied in Cairo, Medina University, Deoband. These are three of the largest well-known leading Islamic institutions in the world. And scholars have deduced that in this coronavirus, rather than you shut down the masjid, you guys understand? Shut down the masjid, Shut down the Juma, stay home and do nothing. Go and the masjid is 
according to the state and the law allowed to be open, then you go to the masjid and you keep the mask and you pray six feet. That is better than not praying Juma, than closing the doors. So that's why you will see in the Haram Sharif, Salah being led with six feet apart. And you have people condemning that. There are people who look at us on, on YouTube and Facebook and they're like, this thing is Haram. I don't know what fic, what jurisprudence where they studied. Well, if that's your opinion, you do that. You stay home, you shut down. You see my point? What I'm trying to say, brothers and sisters, these things happen all the time on Islamic jurisprudence. Allah has taught us in the Quran, commanded us to pray. What? Pray. The Prophet ﷺ has taught us how to pray. Allah didn't teach us how to pray in the Quran. Allah told us, pray. The Prophet ﷺ told us how to pray. Then the Prophet ﷺ prayed different ways, different times. He joined Salah on journeys. There are times he did not join Salah. Huh? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. There are times he sat down with his feet on one way. There are times he sat down straight. So then now you have under the thick jurisprudence law, some people who practice in the last sitting jalsa the, sit, to sit sideways. You guys have seen that? that that's a mazhab law. That's permissible, totally permissible. It was a sunnah of the Prophet. And it's also authentic that he kept his feet straight at times. Some say when he was sick, he did that. When he was healthy, he did that. You guys understand what's going on? When he traveled, based on summer and winter, length of the day, there are differences of opinion how he joined Zohar and Asr together. In Hajj, joined Maghrib and Asia together. Zohar and Asr together. There are some scholars who don't believe you join the Salah, except only in Hajj. What am I saying, to cut a long story short, in this Salah that we pray five times a day, Allah commanded it, the Prophet taught us how to pray it, and he taught us many different ways how to pray. All right? So you have different fuqaha, fiqh, jurisprudence laws on how to pray Salah. You go Africa, you see people praying different. Some people praying so. Maliki, do you know the Malikis do not do that? They pray so. There are some people pray so. Some people pray so. Those are what is called fukaha, thick differences. You don't just condemn one person because he does not do that. Or he has his hand to the side and you say, hey, your salah not valid, you didn't do that. Well, that's what you know as a Hanafi. Malikis pray like that. Haven't you seen people pray like this when you go to Hajj? These are all laws derived from Islamic jurisprudence that were deduced, analyzed from actions of the Prophet ﷺ. So similarly, coronavirus, COVID-19, as has hit the whole world in today's time, never in history something like this has happened. While the Prophet ﷺ spoke about, yeah, don't leave your town and go to another town, and you're from that town, don't come to this town. Some people analyze that to mean shut down your masjid, don't go to your masjid, stay home. However people want to do it, mashallah, that's their choice. But you know what is sad? You know what is sad? In second khutbah, we'll talk about what is sad, bi'idnullah. Anyhow, let me complete. I just wanted to make this point on fiqh as we spoke about. The sunnah when you sit in a khutbah is to look at the khatib. That's a sunnah. Always remember that. That's the sunnah. Go study it. Verify it. If you don't find it, send me an email or a text. Inshallah, bi'idhnillah, al-hikmat dawa center. So we were talking about the beginning of Ramadan. Today, 15th of Ramadan has gone. Fasting. Tonight is the 16th. Next week, Wednesday night, begins the Etikaf. So those of us who will be in Etikaf, whether here or in other places in the world, please keep your six feet distance, if not ten. A lot of people sleep with their mouths open. So you may not be able to use your mask. So sleep ten feet apart. Huh? When you're eating, keep the, 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 the distance. And I'm just saying this for all our viewers worldwide. Those who will be in masjids for Etikaf, where it's open, where it's open. And inshallah, the 24th of May is expected to be the first, I mean, the first of Shawwal, 
which means the 24th to 4 is expected to be Eid, 999.9%, inshallah. Because the moon will be born on the 22nd, it will not be visible, it will be 99.9% .9 visible on Saturday, and that will make Sunday the first. So I just wanted to recap so we all know what's happening for the rest of the month, inshallah. Today the 15th, half of the month is gone, Etikaf begins Wednesday night, inshallah. Eid is the following Sunday, May 24th. In the second khutbah, we will continue by Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah, paradise without reckoning. Wa akhri da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Wa Laqibatil Al Muttaqeen, Wa Salatu Wa Salamu Ala Rasulihi Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahabihi Ajma'een. Once more, we thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for blessing us to be here to perform the Salatul Jum'ah and to listen to the Khutbah. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to shower His peace and blessings upon the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And again, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his mercy, his guidance, his forgiveness, and his acceptance upon each and every one of us. Again, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his rahmah, his mercy upon me. By giving me the permission and the ability to continue with the second khutbah, inshallah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower unto me the quality of tawakkal ala Allah, the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqwa, the piety, the iman, the faith, the hikmah, the wisdom, the ilm, the knowledge, and once more the ability to fulfill this responsibility in delivering the khutbah. I put my tawakkal, I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most sufficient. And just to recap, my brothers and sisters, I hope uh, we all understand that fiqh point I mentioned, that there are differences of opinion. So if you practice one fiqh opinion, don't condemn someone else. Because if you go in Africa, you see one line of mazhab practice majority. You go in Pakistan, are different. You may see some adjustments in India on certain muslas because of their multicultural practices of different religions and different people. You've got to understand what goes on. Yeah. Different fatwas on different maslas. In America, you may see different things. So, ma, what I'm saying here, don't condemn anyone. All I'm saying, try to understand. And if we don't understand another thick jurisprudence law, then don't make your own law to condemn other laws without knowledge. That's very sad. Without knowledge. Without knowledge. May Allah bless us. We are very blessed to have been able to live for another Ramadan and go through half of the month. Subhanallah, this is a blessing. This is a blessing. My brothers and sisters, it is indeed, and I want to share this with you and myself, bi'idhnallah, with the permission of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and our worldwide viewers. It is a big struggle. And Allah, accept your fast, and your Quran, and your sakat, your sadqa, your charity, your prayer, and all your amal. It is a big task. Isn't it a big task? Let's be very honest. We are not superhuman, you know. We are regular human beings. And Allah knows that fasting is a drill. It's a drill. It's like you're in a camp. Yeah. You know what it is to be going to sleep 1 o'clock in the morning? 12 o'clock? Well, maybe people who don't pray tarawih, you probably go to sleep 9 o'clock, right? But those who pray, going to sleep 12, 1, get enough 4 o'clock, then having to eat, to break fast, your stomach is not even ready to eat. Isn't that a drill? It's a test. It's a trial. 
It's an effort. But Allah loves that. Allah loves that. That's why He says that fasting is for Him. Because you are doing that only for Allah. You are doing that for the pleasure of Allah. So Allah will love you for doing that. And Allah will bless you more and more and more. It's a drill. Then you get up and you eat a little bit that you can't even eat. You eat too much, you vomit. You eat too little, you feel more hungry. Interesting drill. Then you got to pray. Then probably get prepared to go to work. Thank God for shutdown. Some people could stay home and work. Then in the evening, you got to break fast. Florida, long hours. Other countries, they break fast at 5.30. 6 o'clock, 6.30. Here it's after 8 o'clock. More blessings. Two hours extra. That's a drill. Don't you think Allah loves that? Wow, Allah really loves that. And Allah has promised His rewards, His forgiveness, His forgiveness, His mercy, His forgiveness, and His acceptance on the people who make that effort. And may Allah accept you and bless you. And bless all of us. Then in the night you break fast, huh? Go to rush and pray Maghrib Salah. Then eat quickly. Then rush to the masjid or masjid that are open. If it's closed down in your area, well, you have a double barakat. Now you could eat how much you want, and you could pray when you want, and you could sleep when you want. But those who got to go to masjid, what happens? You got a schedule. It's a drill. It's a sacrifice. But Allah loves that. That's how we get the blessings. The more effort we make, and you got to run to the masjid, catch it in time for Isha Salat, Tarawih Salat, go until another hour, go back home. By then you get a little hungry. Now it's 12, 1 o'clock, so it's a drill. But you know, I want to share something with you. You remember the story, well not the story, it's not a story really, it's a lesson. In the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, when Allah was about to create human beings, insan, hmm? Hear what he says, huh? Very interesting, very interesting. Uh, time is running out, but we'll have to just do the brief on it. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Surah Baqarah, verse 30, synopsis. When Allah says, وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَ إِنِّي جَعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً Allah told the angels, I am about to create my representative. Insan, human beings. Allah told the angels, I'm about to create my representative on earth. And what did the angels say? They said, Allah, you're going to create man, human beings? Listen, these are people who will kill each other. They will shed blood. They will create fitna, corruption, destruction. Why waste your time to create man? That's what the angels are telling Allah, you know. Hmm? Huh? People who will create facade and fitna and corruption, you're going to create them. And the angels said, وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّهُ بِهَمْدِكَ Allah we glorify you. We praise you. We do your ibadah. Why do you need to create man? This is Surah Baqarah chapter 2. Why are you going to create human beings to waste time? But they were not totally wrong. eh? Because a lot of human beings are like that. Did you see on the news yesterday? One young boy killed his brother and stabbed his father. You saw it? Oh, you don't look at the news neither? Uh, you only look at coronavirus. Right here in Miami. Stabbed his brother, killed him, and stabbed his father to kill him. Psst, and then lawyers say they're insane. Listen, half of the people are insane at the end of the day. And who doesn't do it? They want to do it. So the angels were not wrong. They were smart. But hear what Allah told them. They said, Allah... We glorify you, we praise you. You don't need to waste time with these people. And Allah said, so beautiful. 
Allah. And they also said, wa nuqaddisu laq. They said, we glorify you, respect you, all the sacred nine yards. And Allah said something very beautiful. Qala inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun. Allah said, I know what you don't know. Allah. I got a little goosebump when I read that verse. Allah said, angels, I know what you don't know. What Allah knew? That yes, from amongst the insan, the khalifa and the human beings that he has created, there will be those who will spend the midnight oil praying salah, reading Quran, fasting all day, working hard and giving charity from their money, eating a little bit. Allah, this brings joy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know what is so beautiful, my brothers and sisters? In return, in return, we get the blessings. Because when we fast, when we give charity, when we pray to Salah, do you think the blessing goes to Allah? No, Allah is Akbar. Allah is the greatest. Look at the mercy of Allah. Allah is happy, but the blessings come back to us. That's why Allah tells the angels, you let it be known that I have forgiven my servants. Mera bande ka maaf hai. I have forgiven my servants, those who worship me. And this is so beautiful. Go home, study it. It brings joy and happiness. And when Allah is pleased and Allah is happy with us, what happens? We get the rewards. We get the rewards. We get the rewards. But what you must do, brothers and sisters, don't lose it. Try not to lose these blessings that we are getting in Ramadan. Ramadan is the time to energize, build our iman, build our spirituality, and get more blessings. So we could be energized for the rest of the year. Don't lose it. Allah is very happy with us, those of us who are doing all of this. It is a big struggle. Allah knows it's a big test. Don't lose it. And do you know one of the easiest ways to lose blessings? How? Anger. Anger. The Prophet said, do not ever get angry. When you get angry, you run your mouth. You say bad things. We curse people. We wish people bad. Instead of you have lockdown, you have look down. What? Already we have lockdown, but when you get angry, you look down on everybody else and you start to feel you're the best. The best, the best, the best. I'm better than you. What are you saying? See, that's the easiest way to lose your blessings. That's why the Prophet ﷺ has warned, do not get angry. Because anger makes you lose your mind, your tongue, your hands. Then you run crazy and then the last thing you want to get a gun and go bang, 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 bow. And then you go to jail. Only to realize that I now realize that you made a mistake. And you know that brings to me. So Ramadan, build that. This is a time where the Prophet ﷺ says, if someone argues with you, if someone quarrels with you, what do you tell them? Anasa'im, I am fasting. I won't argue with you. I won't quarrel with you. I won't say back to you what you say. And brothers and sisters, whether it be your wife, your children, your neighbors, family members, they do irritate you. And you know they irritate you the most? Do you know if Brother I mean, Sheikh has an itch in his hand here, think that will irritate me? Not really, it irritates him. But if it itches me, it irritates me big time, right? So when your own family, when your own husband, wife, children, neighbors, friends, close ones irritate you, it's big irritation. So it gets you mad. Then the anger comes out. And then you say bad things. And then that, that will make you lose your blessings. And there's a beautiful example in the life of the Prophet wasallam. Before we conclude the khutbah that I want to remind myself, remind all you brothers and sisters here, our viewers on YouTube, Facebook, worldwide. 
Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. I'm sure a lot of you are aware of this incident. He was sitting with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Remember this, uh, this is Ramadan, remember this. Build the iman and the faith now in this Ramadan. So after Ramadan, we won't lose it. So he was sitting with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And a man came and he insulted Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala. Yeah? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam smiled. Interesting. The man insulted him again. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam smiled. And the third time when the man insulted Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala who said back to the man what the man said to him. And if the man said, you're an idiot, he said, you're also an idiot. Yeah? <laughs> I'm just saying. As soon as Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala who said that, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa got up and he walked away. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala who got up and he went quickly behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Ya Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, what has happened? The man was insulting me and you smiled. The man was insulting me and you smiled. And when I told him back what he said to me, you got up and you left as though you got angry. What is that? What, 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 what is that? What happened? And what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? Abu Bakr, when the man was insulting you, Allah appointed a farishta, an angel, to respond to that man. And I was smiling when I saw the angel responding to the man. He said, and when you decided to respond to the man, Satan came and made you do that. And I do not sit where Satan is. Allahu Akbar. What does that tell us, my brothers and sisters? That when we get angry, and we quarrel, and we argue, and we irritate people. And we get, even, listen, this is about someone irritating you, eh? Leave them in the hands of Allah. I'm, listen, I'm 45 years of Dawah, and I said it last week, and I say it again. This week made me 63 Hijri Islamic years, alhamdulillah. I'm on bonus now. Past the Sunnah age that he passed away. I've seen this, I've been around. A lot of times, it's not, it's, it's not so much. A lot of us try to justify a bad person hurting us. Why can't we develop our iman and leave that bad person in the hands of Allah? You get more satisfaction. That's what the Prophet is saying here. That's what he told Abu Bakr. He said, you don't take things in your hands. Don't think you're better than anybody. Listen, I have lived a life. The amount of people that try to harm me and attack me, I have lived to see them destroyed, family destroyed, business destroyed, homes destroyed. Our brother and sister are still alive. My parents could witness that. And they're still alive. Ask them. They could tell you one, two, three, four, five people. So we'll destroy Sheikh Shafayat. I've lived to see their homes, their family, their business got ruined. And I never did anything. All I did was leave them in the hands of Allah. Ask Brother Zad. Whenever anybody tries to make anything, I say, Brother Zad. He says, I'm going to get a lawyer for them. I say, Brother Zad, leave them in the hands of Allah. The next thing, Allah takes them away. Listen, example, like he's right here. Said, anybody try to attack us? Darulurum al hikmat yuwi. Leave them in the hands of Allah. And I've lived to see those people got destroyed. Oh, Allah took them away to another state. See how it works? I said, look what Allah did. He relieved us of a burden without us committing a sin. And Satan coming and doing that. That lesson of Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu ta'ala. Powerful lesson. So when this Ramadan comes to an end, and even now, don't spoil your fast. Your wife tells you something, you get angry. Your children tell you something. Your neighbors, your co-workers, don't ruin your fast. Leave them in the hands of Allah. You see that? That's, if you want to obey the Quran and the Sunnah, that's when you get more blessings. And when Allah deals with a decision, nothing can stop it. It's musbut. It's powerful. Usime takhate. That's what has strength and power. Do you remember the lesson in the Quran? Surah Feel, Alam tara kaifa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashabil feel. That's a whole next lecture, and I don't have the time to get into that too. In the next khutbah, bayithnillah. When Abraha, 
came with all his animals, his elephants, elephants. <coughs> surah Fil, the surah of the elephants. What did he want to do? Destroy the Kaaba. Hazrat Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of the Prophet وسلم, said, Allah, I don't have the strength like Abraha. Look at this strong man, tyrant ruler, with thousands of elephants. Wow, Allah, ye to aapki ghar hai. Aap hi fazat kar lije. Mera bas ki nahi. This is your house. I can't handle it. You got the strength. In Allah, Allah, kulli shayin qadeeb. You have the power over all things. And Abdul Muttalib left it in the hands of Allah. And Abraha came with his thousands, thousands of elephants to smash down the Kaaba. And before they can destroy the Kaaba, Allah sent down little birds, little birds, what? Little birds with tiny pebbles in their beaks, and that destroyed big camels, massive camels with a big tyrant ruler. Destroyed! See how Allah works? Little birds, little pebbles in a little beak destroyed big elephants. Always remember that. Abdul Muttalib put his trust in Allah, tied his camel, and left it in the hands of Allah. So don't lose your blessings, brothers and sisters. Ramadan, it takes a lot of struggle to fast, to get up in the morning. Listen, if it's easy for some of you, it's not easy for me, brother. That's the biggest thing. Go to sleep one o'clock and get up four o'clock. I don't even know how to calculate that math. It does not make sense on my clock. And if you're going to make all that sacrifice for Ramadan, all day no food, why lose it? Why lose it? By, with anger? Huh? Saying the wrong things? Hurting people? No, don't do that. Even if they hurt you and say the wrong things, you put your trust in Allah. We got great lessons in the Quran and the Sunnah, how Allah, Allah takes a care of our affairs. You do your duty to Allah, we do our duty to Allah, and Allah makes it happen. All right? Last but not least, I want to share another verse from the Quran as we conclude, because I know we only have in one Juma, and I still see drones of people coming in. So <laughs> make sure they, they sit six feet apart, brother, turn away, sahib, all in the tiles, all over, inshallah. We have the space, mashallah. I want to share verses as we conclude the khutbah bath in the line, inshallah. In Surah An Kabut, chapter 29, verse 69, Allah says, Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim. Walladina jahadu fina lanahdiyannahum subuluna wa inna Allah lama al muhsinin. Allah says, and those people who strive, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا Those people who strive in my path, in Allah's path, you see how you're making the sacrifice? Get up in the morning, three, four hours sleep, eat a little bit, fast all day, pray, sun or no sun, pray tarawin, and Allah loves that. And Allah says, those people who strive, spend time, Strive and struggle for my pleasure, for me. Huh? What he says? He says, then I guide them on my path. Allah says, He guides them on His path. You know what Allah means there? He's going to remove obstacles from your path, He's going to remove problems from your path, He's going to remove difficulties from your path, and He will make you. Strive in his path of fisa billah easily by the mercy of Allah. See how powerful. Wa in Allah al muhsinin. Allah says, and Allah is with those who do good. Wa in Allah, what? And certainly Allah lama al muhsinin. The time that we spend, the striving, the spending, the sacrifice, the effort that we make in this month of Ramadan. Allah loves it. Allah boasts to the angels. Angels, I know what you don't know. Look at my servants, how they are worshipping me. Forgiveness and mercy upon them. Allahu Akbar. See? And then here Allah says, 
that he will guide us. What does guide mean? Listen, follow what we're saying here, be in Allah. We already pray in Salah. So why is Allah going to guide us? You're already fasting. You're already giving charity. You're already striving in the path of Allah. What does Allah mean by He's going to guide you in His path? You are already in His path. He means He will make difficulties away from your life. Allahu Akbar. And make your path even much more smoother, comfortable and easy. So you will always be on His path. You know how some people find difficulties to pray? Their jobs keep them back. Sickness keep them back. Problems keep them back. Allah will remove all of that so his path will be smooth for us. Because he says, He loves to be with people who do good. So you do good for Allah, and Allah will make everything better for us. That's what he's saying. You do good, and Allah will make everything better. So the little effort that we make in this month of Ramadan, my brothers and sisters, chapter 29, Surah Al-Ankabut, verse 69. Allah has promised he will make everything easier and better for us. Don't worry about the corona and COVID-19. This has its own problem. We will get blessings for it. The struggle that you go through, you will get blessings for it. I know it's a big effort. I know it's a big effort. It's a big sacrifice. But don't give up, please. This is a lesson. I told you and I told myself and I remind myself and I remind you, the world was moving too fast. You know that? Progress, promotion, production. Everybody, people going to college and not going to masjid to pray Juma. People going to university and not going to masjid to pray. Eight day Juma. People not praying Juma. College, job, business. Remember? You guys remember? Before COVID 19, Nala came and he shut everything down. Said, you were not going to Juma because of your job and your business and school. That was more important. I will show you what is important. Allah is most important. He can destroy everything. And do you know once upon a time, people used to boast as to who has more money. Then we went into the days as to who is more rich. Right? Then people came into the days as to who is the millionaire. You remember those days, Brother Azara? People wanted to boast who is a millionaire. No, people don't care who is a millionaire because every second person is a millionaire. I could check right here how many millionaires we got. And those who said it and I know, what about those who hide it and you don't know? Every second person is a millionaire. You all got homes half a million dollars to start with. Forget about the business and your job. Now people compete as to who is a billionaire and how many billions they got. That's where we are. And Allah shot from Trump go down. Bloomberg lost the election he couldn't make. Trump in his highest reign in power in America. Allah said, I want to teach you a lesson. It's not I. It's not me. It is Allah. So stop saying I and me made everything successful in America. All the billions that Bloomberg had, he couldn't make. And all the success that Trump had, Allah wanted to put him on a spot. Put him on a spot. Checkpoint, checkpoint, checkpoint. Remember God, and it's God that makes it happen. Not only Trump, but everybody, whether it be Modi or whoever president and prime ministers in the world, to let them know it's not you who make things happen. Allah can shut it down and you can't get it going. So remember that, my brothers and sisters. COVID-19 is only a lesson, but it should not stop us. There are a lot of Muslims who were shut down even before COVID-19. Isn't that true? My brother, uh, Abdul Salam? You go in Jamaat. When you go to invite Muslims to come, what do you invite them to do? Come to pray, right? Because they don't go masjid. They don't pray salah. So before COVID-19, you had many Muslims who don't go masjid and who don't pray salah. Do you know that? Yeah, 45 years of traveling throughout the world, I'm telling you what I've seen. Don't let people fool you. COVID-19 didn't stop anything. It just made lazy people happier. COVID-19 made lazy people happier. Lazy Muslims who don't like to go masjid. They were not coming for Juma anyhow. You who have been coming, Allah bless you. Don't lose it. Those were happy. They were very happy. There are a lot of people, listen. Do you know, I give you a little homework. You go anywhere, Bangladesh, Pakistan, America, Trinidad, Guyana, Africa, anywhere in the world. And you check the people that come for Juma one day. And check the amount of people that come for Eid. 
Eid audience is four times more than Juma, right? If you have 100 people for Juma, for Juma, you have 400 for Eid. What does that tell you? 300 people don't pray Juma every week. They suddenly come out for, for, for Eid. And not all the people pray Eid. So not even 25, 30% of Muslims pray Juma. So COVID-19 didn't stop them. Some of them were just happier that they got to stay home, all right? Because they were already not going for Juma. You just do the match. Don't take my word for it. Go anywhere and do the match. Look at Eid, four times the crowd. Where were those people for Juma? They were not going for Juma. And that everybody prays Eid. So please, don't use excuses. Don't use excuses. This is Ramadan. Let this Ramadan build us, build us, build our Iman. Don't get angry. Be charitable. Be kind. Be loving. Do as much as you can do. Don't get excuses to keep us back from our tarawih. A lot of people I know, you're not, you don't go to masjid because of the lockdown. But pray, read your Quran at home. Pray your tarawih salah at home. Pray your five times salah. Don't use that as an excuse. You're not going to masjid, so you're not praying at home neither. No. Allah, Allah we do it for, not for Trump. Not for people. It is Allah who will love us more. Allah who will protect us and Allah who will give us more. And Allah will remove trouble and problems from our pathway. All right? Let's do that. Don't forget that. And I may Allah bless all those brothers and sisters. They are, and I, I'm not saying everybody. That's why I said before. There are a lot of people who do it, but the few who don't, we need to remind them and remind ourselves. There are a lot of people who have been praying. May Allah bless all the people who have been supporting, you know, supporting the dawah, supporting with Quran, sending money to feed the needy and the poor, giving their zakat. May Allah bless all of you. And may Allah bless the rest of us who are not doing it with the hidayah. The iman and the faith that we will also start to do that. And may Allah accept all your efforts. And the, the, whatever little we do, may Allah forgive us and keep us in his path. And protect us and make us have a very successful, a very blessed, a very accepted maqbul Ramadan, inshallah. Accepted Ramadan. And may Allah grant us all Jannah without reckoning. Ya Allah, ya Rahim, Rahimin, ya Ghafur Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Ya Allah, we thank thee for all the favors and bounties you have bestowed upon us, Ya Allah. We ask thee, Allah, to shower your peace and blessings upon the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. We ask thee, Allah, to give us all the good in this world and the good in the hereafter. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa kina alda abunnaar. Inna Allahu malaykatuhu yusalluna ala nabi. يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آل محمد بعد من صلى وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آل محمد بعد من قعد وقام وصل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى كل ملائكتك المقربين وعلى عباد الله الصالحين برحمتك يا رحم الرحمين عباد الله إن الله يعمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وين وينهان الفحشاء والمنكر والبغ يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون ولا ذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وعز وجل وهم أكبر الله أكبر